The vast amber waves of grain seem an unceasing sea of unbroken golden wheat and prairie grasses. But a mighty beast roams this American savanna, framed by blue mountain backdrops. Its size dwarfs most other creatures on the continent, and its appetite is nearly insatiable. But big, brown, and bearded are the qualities America's largest animal needs to survive in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's the show that's about 30 minutes of interesting animal info. And who does that info belong to? Not me. Who's, Not you. Who, who's me? The, the listener. Me, Smee. Me is Joe. And me is Carlos. And today we're talking about the Keystone King of the Home on the Range, where this big guy likes to play. Ooh. I'm going to... Interesting. <laughs> that song is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And we're going to talk about why. All right. So let's just let's just dive into it, since we got a lot of ground to cover. Uh-huh. Um, just like the bison does. We are talking about the American bison. Happy almost 4th of July, everyone, by the way. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yes. When this comes out, it will be tomorrow. If you listen to it a day if, late, if you today. Listen, if you listen to it the day it comes out, it will be tomorrow. If Any you other... listen to it three days later, come on, man. Get, <laughs> get with it. <laughs> so, yeah, we decided to do, this. I guess, the second most patriotic animal. The first being the eagle. The bald, bald eagle. eagle. <laughs> but the national mammal. Which yeah. I didn't even know we had a national mammal, and we didn't until 2016. Really? <laughs> didn't know that it was a thing. But yeah, they're, they're like, okay, now we have a national mammal two years ago. It's about time, you know? Yeah, I know. That's the best family. You want to know the national animals of class. the UK, which are my favorite? Best class. What? What, uh, what are they? <laughs> the national animals of the UK are the unicorn, dragon, and the English bulldog. Which I call cheatsies. I didn't think you could use mythical beasts, but... Yeah. I mean, there's there's really... That's ridiculous. There's no <laughs> such thing as an English bulldog. <laughs> One of these things is an abomination, <laughs> and that's the English bulldog. <laughs> but no, we are talking about the American buffalo, which is also known as the Thethanka in the Lakota language. Mm -hmm. Pulling out some linguistic tricks there. It, and it's also known as the Beefy Buffalo, the Bicentennial Bison, and Buffy the Barbed Wire Slayer. Bicentennial because that's how that's how long the the USA has been a country? No, that's how long it's taken for the bison to come back from its t terrible, <laughs> terrible <laughs> slaughtering situation from the early 19th, 19th century. Yeah. But yeah, I just I just couldn't pass up saying the word bicentennial. With yeah, bison. no, it works. Um, all right, so we are in the kingdom that the Lakota also like to call Animalia. Oh, do they? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the phylum is uh, Chordata. This thing has a, a very big and stocky spine. A robust spine. The class is Mammalia, as I said. It's the national mammal. And I've gotten to do two mammals in a row. Yeah, well, we've gotten to. You choose your animal. <laughs> <laughs> this is all up to you. We Last season, we did a bunch of small animals. Yeah. This time, we're making up for that with just picking the biggest ones yeah. we can think of. Yeah. So the order is Arteodactyla. Arteodactyla. Hmm. There we go. What is that? Um, that means it's a mammal that rests on t its two front toes, I think. Oh, okay. Um, where other mammals that are not in this order rest on the third toe, like a horse. A horse rests on its third toe, but these rest on two. Would that like, be like, bovine things? Like a club. Well, the family is bovidae. Okay. Which includes... Um, Toads. No, that's bufa. <laughs> that's bufonidae. <laughs> no, it includes, obviously, ca cattle. Right. And deer. And antelopes. And the European bison, probably. Yes, and buffalo and yeah. stuff like that. Um, the genus is bison. And guess what the species is? Bison. Bison. <laughs> I want you to just close your eyes and wish for a subspecies name. 
What is it? Is it bison? Yes, it is. We're talking about the bison, bison, bison. If you say it three times fast, it shows up. If you close your eyes and turn around in a bathroom and say it three times fast, you're going to have a bison in the bathroom with you. That's way worse <laughs> than a, a ghoul. Yeah, a, a Bloody Mary or whatever. It'll fill up that bathroom real quick. Yeah, you'll probably just die by its appearance. <laughs> because it's going to fill up the whole bathroom. Um, all right, so let me get started by talking about their their range, their home on the range. Uh huh. They live in every state. Including Hawaii. Did you know that? Oh, wait, because of zoos? No, there are actually like, there are bison herds in Hawaii ha- set up there. I've never seen a bison herd. Well, set up here. What? I've never seen one in Florida. Have they're, you? They're here. They're here. <laughs> Get I, used to it. <laughs> I have seen um, b- bison in Florida, but not like a whole herd of them, like two of them surrounded by Cows. other cattle. So, like, they're on farms? Yes. Okay. But apparently, they, yeah, they're not in zoos, but they are extant in all 50 states. They can be domesticated. Yeah. And they can be domesticated easier than the European version. Right. Bison is actually Greek for ox-like animal. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. An ox is not a type of animal. (laughs) I mean, it's not like a species right. of animal. I, I always thought like, oh, it's a big, strong cow. No, it's uh, it's any bovine, bovid, that's um, used for manual labor. Okay. So you put a yoke on a bison, you've got yourself an ox. You put a yoke on a springbok or a bambi, you've got yourself an ox. You put a yoke on me and I got egg on my face. <laughs> Oh, man. I thought we were done with the Groucho Marx (laughs) style jokes. (laughs) It's going to be our brand. All right. Yeah. So um, there used to be like 50 million of them. And then settlers killed almost all of them to hurt the Native Americans, like source of food and fur and stuff. Um, But now we're back to 500K. I heard that they heard. I (laughs) (laughs) I I read that they literally would drive them off of cliffs. Yep. Just to just to just to be rude about it. Well, just to get to the Native Americans, like, oh, now you now you can't be here anymore because you're the, you're like a nomadic hunter gatherer tribe that relies on the buffalo, and now you have no buffalo. Right. Or bison. I'm gonna say buffalo a lot, mostly <laughs> because of the song that I'm about to sing. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, give me a home <laughs> where the bison do roam and the deer and the caribou play. Because there's no antelopes in North America. Uh-huh. Where often is heard a discouraging word and the bison were hunted away. That. Home, <laughs> home on the range, where the manifest destiny rages, <laughs> where often is heard a discouraging word. Sing it with me. And the, the bison, bison were hunted no, no. away. There you go. I wasn't paying attention. It needs work, but I think it'll go platinum. That was sad. <laughs> The that lyrics. is that is my taxonomically and historically correct version of Home on the Range because there are no buffalo or antelope in North America. So whoever wrote this song clearly has not listened to this episode of LDT yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was marvelous and uh, disheartening. Okay, good. <laughs> I wanted to match the poem that you did for the bear episode. <laughs> I, th- I figure I needed to contribute. <laughs> to, to, to the... the the poetry side of this this is a variety the show the non prose it's a variety <laughs> it's true you've got vaudevillian humor and and then poetry okay so let's imagine that you are a a baby or uh the a member of a papua new guinean tribe that has never seen or heard of the american bison before Done. what how how do we how do we explain to this person what they look like well picture a giant cow Okay. The big old hump on its back, some of them. Uh, okay. Like Long brown, shaggy fur. Uh huh. Big horned heads, like really, really big heads. And a stylish goatee. <laughs> I'm uh, kind of picturing a yak. You're close. Just trim the back. Yeah. It's not it's not quite as hairy as a yak. Yeah. But we're getting there. If you put it, a yoke on a yak. 
you put a yoke on it, if you get if you yoke that yak, it's you got ox. yourself an ox. <laughs> <laughs> it's the largest mammal in the Americas, not just North America, but also South America too. Not that they have like any particularly big mammals. And the closest contestant is the moose. I would imagine. Or is it a grizzly bear? I think a moose is bigger. I think a moose is bigger than a grizzly bear as well. Those things are big. Yeah. I always thought I thought a moose was the biggest. Yeah. Animal in North America. Bison yeah. are huge. Yeah. But they're also just thick. They're not as tall. They are they are very like round and yeah. strong. <laughs> um like a bowl of weedies. Just just thick. <laughs> thick with two C's. Um all right, so I guess I guess it's time. It's time? You had to go through my song, so I'll acquiesce. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because it's time for the uh, listener's most favorite part of the show and which I have officially completed a poll of our listeners and 80% of respondents prefer when you reluctantly accept this segment (laughs) rather than wholeheartedly. That's really mean. (laughs) That's really mean of, of you out there, but I appreciate your engagement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do that more. Um, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not reluctant for engagement, but um, how about you run another poll on um, whether or not you want to hear more songs from me during, this, during okay. the show? Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> um, all right, so you've heard it. It's time for the listener's favorite part of the show. Uh, say it with me now. Measure up. <laughs> you. You did this to me. <laughs> I trusted you. I got you before you could get me. That's a preemptive strike. <laughs> <laughs> I did hesitate, too. <laughs> you did. But there was no enthusiasm, so you're, you're going to have a lot of work to do in post. No, that'll that'll be real nice. Put the reverb on it. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's talk about... Okay, so this is the part of the show where we put the animal size into relatable terminology. And in this season, season three, we're doing it in a quiz format. So I'm going to give you some scenarios and comparisons, and you're going to give me your most accurate guesses. I've been getting a little bit better at this game. Yeah. Um, Unless it, like, the, the smaller, the, the fewer, like, of the animal that goes into the thing like the better I do when it comes to like the diameter of the earth or from here to the moon. It's going to be hard. It's not that great. But here we go. All right. Let's talk about length. They are two to three and a half meters long, which is 6.6 to 11.5 feet. You did all that math in your head? Yes. Uh, Yeah, all from memory. Uh, Let's average that about nine at about nine feet or 2.7 meters. How many... Pedophrin varicosa, the world's smallest frog, go into an American bison. 1,350. Now that is a decisive answer. Yeah, it is. I'm not, I'm not going to burden the listener with my machinations. <laughs> <laughs> it's also incredibly wrong. Uh, the answer is 348 frogs. So the smallest frog. Is the smallest frog a koki? No, it's uh, it doesn't have a a name name. It just it, I just gave its binomial name. Oh, really? It doesn't have a name name. Pay it's pay pedo fr- fren frine varicosa. If you can look that Pedofren up, Pedofren varicosa. Yeah, sure. If you can look that up based on what I just said, do it because they're small and adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have an actual like street I name. I think they're recently um, discovered. It's like a, it's like an order, I think. Oh, okay. I don't. That's a. I I gave an ex, one example, but it's an entire order of small frogs that are pretty much the same size, and they're all adorable. Okay. All right, like so they fit on close. the tip of your finger. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about height. Let's talk about height at the withers, which is the shoulder, the back of the beast, towards the shoulder. So so not the shoulder. Because the highest point. The shoulder has that hump. It is. Yes. That's the withers? Yeah. I thought the withers is where you would sit. No, it's the, the the back towards the shoulders. It's like the highest point usually of the back. Okay. So let's talk about the bison's withers, which is 
152 to 186 centimeters or 60 to 73 inches. Good. You and I read the same Wikipedia page. Let's a- let's average that 5.6 feet. How many bison heights go into the world's tallest corn stalk? <laughs> I'm going to say the world's tallest corn stalk is 16 feet tall, which means three-ish. A little bit more than three. It's eight. What? Eight bison. Yeah. How does that even support itself? I think they help it. I think they make it supports for it. Jeez. This 45 foot. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It might as well be a beanstalk and you climb up there and slay a giant. It's one of those things where it's like, like the, like they have contests for this kind of thing all the time. Sure. So I was that, just picturing. That stuff gets out of hand. I was just picturing the. In the in the the great American musical Oklahoma, he yes. sings that the corn the corn is as high as an elephant's eye. You want yeah. me to sing that song? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about the the weight of this bison. Bulls can vary, can be like super large compared to cows. They vary sexual sexually dimorphic when it comes to weight. Mm-hmm. So weight can range from seven hundred and one pounds or 318 kilograms that is super specific <laughs> for a, a big range in like adolescent females and then uh up to 200 and or, or rather 2200 pounds or a thousand kilograms in large adult males so how many large adult male bison could a ford f-150 safely tow so we're not doing an average here we're doing just the max uh yeah F-150? Ford F-150. Okay. That's a pretty heavy-duty truck. Mm-hmm. Um, taking into account static friction and the weight of the actual cart. Mm-hmm. A million? <laughs> <laughs> a million bison? <laughs> give, me, give me a real guess. Um, I'm going to say uh, 230. Wow. No way. You really have I'm, a lot of I'm, faith in the Ford F-150. And I'm wrong. <laughs> or you don't, you're not imagining how big this bison is very well. I am imagining, but I have a lot of faith in the Ford F-150. It's three and a half, or one large male and one large female. Really? Or, or three large males and one large female. Hmm. I have more faith in pulling things, I guess, than um, I should. It's not, it's like a pickup. It's like a big pickup truck. I know it's a big pickup truck, but it's like usually those things pull like Toyota Tacomas can apparently pull more huh. but now you know that what I wanted to do was compare to the weight of a you know an American firefighter truck okay I could not find how much those things can pull. how much those things weigh uh, oh how much you know they weigh I, you know how much they I know how much like I, I found how much the the London versions are, but I don't care about the London versions. Oh, but what about our listeners from the other side of the pond? I'm not going to compare an American bison to a British truck. But what about their national animal, the dragon? <laughs> that could be any way to... <laughs> it could be any and every way at the same time. True, very true. Um, all right, that's that's it. That you Now you can accurately picture this animal. Okay, and so let's talk about its diet real fast. Sure. It eats m- grass. <laughs> yeah, almost exclusively. Yeah, pretty much exclusively grass. Um, sometimes snow when they're thirsty. Yeah. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about their their interesting behavior, but you've got that mostly. Um, they can run at 35 miles per hour, oh, which wow. is terrifying. Yeah. Um, American bison like to charge as their attack mode. Yes. Where European bison like to, like to lock, lock horns. horns yeah. yeah. European bison look crazy. They look about the same. They look like they just look weirder, like more intimidating. Their heads are, are yeah, because they have longer necks. The the fur, it's like furrier and like hairier up towards the front of a um, of an American bison, mm-hmm. and it just makes it look like a just a tank, like a big old like lumberjack. Like he looks <laughs> almost friendly. <laughs> he does look friendly. He looks like you want to kind of tussle his yeah. hair. <laughs> um, but the but the there's less fur. Around the European version, and you can see its broad shoulders and stuff, and it's crazy. And its head is a little bit higher, so it spends more time gra- uh, eating from trees. Shrubberies. And taller plants, which is not called grazing. 
It's called browsing, which I found out. I browsed to find this information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. You ready for the major fact? No. They also jump pretty high. They jump over what? fences and stuff. You would not expect that. No. But if it's running at 35 miles an hour, I guess like a little leap would get it going. Yeah. Um, but just also the, the weight of this thing and 35 miles an hour, that's literally being hit by a car. Yeah. They can also swim. There's no getting away from these guys unless you climb a tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they can live for up to 20 years. And they can't see very well. There's this National Geographic. That's why they like to charge. They need to get up real they, close they, to see. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> 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 um, but there's this picture of like a bison with its face pressed into a sign. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so funny. It's like they can't, they don't have very good eyesight. And it looks, looks like he's really, really trying to read <laughs> like this uh, Yellowstone sign. Um, but they're smelling and uh, hearing is on point. Nice. Now you are permitted to speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> you do outrank me as general info. Very true. And uh, yeah, so um, you have permission to speak. <laughs> you have the major fact reporting for duty. Let's yes. do this. All right. Let's talk about the bison's social hierarchy. Uh, it's based on the eldest born. Like human societies. There's a lot of human societies where the firstborn has is, is hierarchically higher than everyone else. Um, like and then, the Japanese, like the ancient Hebrews, like the Chinese. Yeah. And then sometimes in, in like tribes and things, the oldest person is the wisest and the leader. Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. They they do combat. Yeah, but it goes to the firstborn uh, and they fight. True. Okay. So male and female bison live in separate herds and mix during mating season only, which is interesting. I didn't think about that. I, didn't, I wouldn't expect that. I would just, okay, just a herd. It's whatever. Um, <laughs> it's whatever. Who cares? <laughs> That's what I thought they thought. <laughs> um so the male bison join bachelor herds or live on their own starting at age three. Before that, they live in their mother's herd. Um, when breeding, the dominant males will tend, quote unquote, a harem of a few cows. Uh, and tending means they follow cows around, uh, the ones they like. They're creepy. Um, hey. They follow them around. Hey, baby. And they chase away rivals. Yeah, it's like kind of creepy. Is that, like, that's not what a bison sounds like. No. Actually, I, I imagine a bison sounds like Kevin Michael Richardson from, I'm pretty sure, The Book of Virtues. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they will stand, but they will even stand between females and male bison uh, to block their view, the female's view of the other bison. It's like, don't look at him. <laughs> I'm all you need, baby. <laughs> don't even look at him. Uh, so challenging bulls bellow at tending bulls to get the female's attention and to assess the bull's strength and stamina. So what will happen is a challenger will come up to you, you're the male, you're the you're the, the tending bull, and he'll bellow at you, and you have to bellow back louder. Um, okay. What if you don't bellow back and just hit him with your horns? What do you think he'll do? <laughs> well, you, you don't want to do that because you got an entire rut to make it through. Mating season, and you you need to conserve your strength. You don't want to fight when you don't have to, right? You want to out bellow someone if you can. Yeah, speak loudly, and also have a, a and, and carry a big horn. Carry, <laughs> <laughs> carry some big shiny polished horns. Um, so males will tend any female who's ready to have calf macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not selective at all. They're just like you. You down for some calf? I'll I'll give you a calf if you're down. I don't care what you look like. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your mother was. I don't care if you're royalty. Yeah, I just I'm looking for. What if they're the firstborn? They don't care. The males don't care. So to dominant bulls mate in the first few weeks of the mating season. Challenging bulls will wait to conserve their energy and strength. As the tending bull fights off males, fights off rivals, tends the cow, and he gets tired, basically. And in the late rut, rut challengers are strong enough to drive off tired dominant bulls to mate. Uh, Seems like a sustainable system of checks and balances. 
<laughs> yeah. So earliest born calves tend to grow up to be larger bison for two reasons. Early born calves or the offspring are of larger dominant bulls because of the, the phenomenon I just talked about. Mm-hmm. Also, calves... Just the bait and switch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, calves are that are conceived in the early rut, which is the mating season, uh, are born in the early spring. So their mothers have spring, all spring and summer to eat and produce milk before winter. What if they have an offspring? What do you mean? Oh, well, then they just try harder. <laughs> well, that's the point. They're trying to have They're trying offspring. to have offspring. So early born females are able to produce more offspring, studies show. For some reason, if you're born earlier as a female, you're larger and you can make more calves. Maybe you're just being larger lets you do that. Maybe. But then also males that are born earlier in the season uh, also tend to be a little bit larger. But as they age the differences kind of are not as present in males that they are in females. Okay. So basically what you've got here is a de facto situation where the earliest born animals are the dominant ones. That's, that's people. (laughs) That's what people do. (laughs) When you're, when you're the earliest born, you're bigger than everyone else. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But that's just interesting how, when they're born has to do with how big they are. Yeah. I guess you have more time to feed over the summer before the winter comes. Right. But they... Bulk up. Calves will nurse for a long time, like up to nine months. Are they good parents? The The males don't do anything in terms of parenting. They're deadbeat? Yeah. The females are cows. <laughs> they're, they're pretty... They stick around. Okay. Yeah. I saw that um, there's a difference between plains bison and wood bison, and the wood bison are bigger. Yes, and have you wouldn't more think pronounced that, but yeah, humps. You'd think wood bison would be smaller. Yeah, because they don't. I'm not sure why I would think that. <laughs> because things that live in jungles are smaller than things that live on plains. Sure, that makes sense. So, like dense jungles, like the the rainforests of South America, have smaller species of cats and. Uh, things like although, that compared to like the savanna. Although tigers live in jungles. That's true. And they're bigger than lions. They live on the savanna. So. The, I guess the jungles of India aren't as, that, that as tigers dense. live in aren't as dense as rainforests. Listen, I've seen the most recent Jungle Book and I know that those <laughs> things can get pretty dang dense. <laughs> we also have not talked about the fact that bison are not buffalo. Yeah. Um, buffalo are not in the genus bison. Yeah. Um, they have a different genus. And uh, there are two kinds of buffalo, the water buffalo and the cape buffalo, and they live in Africa. Yeah. And they don't have shaggy fur. Nope. Very different. It's too hot. Although I did see that buffalo is an acceptable term for this, but why have taxonomy when it's just, you're, you're going to play loosey-goosey with the it's rules? It's only acceptable because so many people have called it a buffalo. So, <laughs> that's all we got for the American bison. So, polish your horns, brush your goatees. And defend your birthright in life, death, and taxonomy. Whether you're listening to this episode on the day it comes out, or any other day, we want to take the time to wish all of our American listeners a happy Independence Day. And if you're from another country, we want to wish you a happy day anyway. Remember to celebrate carefully and practice good firework safety. Yes! Don't forget, those amber waves of grain are flammable. Also, if you have any burning questions, let us know on Twitter, Facebook, or Gmail. We are LD Taxonomy everywhere. If you like big overhead explosions, why not try out some stars? Five stars to be exact. Leaving us a review on iTunes or Google Play can really help us spread like wildfire. Oh, no, not that kind of wildfire, Buffy. Whoa, how did she get in here? She's been in here the whole time. She's our new producer. Isn't that right, Buffy? Hey! She's crushing the equipment! Buffy, no! This podcast is brought to you in part by the Brain Trust Brothers Network. For more information about this podcast or others, visit BrainTrustBros.com. Oh, I didn't even say why I called it Buffy the Barbed Wire Slayer. Because it can't be contained! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Because it can jump and it's strong. I actually had to go and look up rhymes for vampire.